Hey everyone, it's Dan here. In this video, I'm going to use a DuPont analysis to show you how to analyze the company's profitability. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. I'm a business school professor focused on accounting and finance. So if you're into that kind of thing, please hit the subscribe button to check out my other videos. Okay, so before we jump into the DuPont analysis, I want to review some of the elements of the financial statements since the formulas we're going to be looking at are going to reference some of those elements. So the first thing here at the top is called the accounting equation, sometimes just called the balance sheet equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. This is always true for every corporation. Assets are all the things the corporation owns. Liabilities are what we owe others. And then you have equity. Equity is sometimes referred to book value, sometimes called the net worth of the company. This makes a lot of sense because if you subtract liabilities from both sides of the equations, the equation essentially becomes, here's all the stuff I own minus what I owe others. The remainder, of course, is my net worth or accounting book value. In addition to the balance sheet, we have the income statement. Every year, every corporation must provide their income statement, which shows how much they sold during the year, their sales, minus all the expenses. The remainder is the profit called net income. So if you look up profitability metrics, you can find tons of measures. Here are three common ones. Net income margin, sometimes called profit margin, is your net income for the year divided by your sales. So for every dollar of sales, how much do you get to keep in total profit in the end? The second measure is return on assets. So for a given level of assets that we give you at the beginning of the year, we use beginning year assets, how much income do you generate? And finally, return on equity. Very similar idea to return on assets, but we use the beginning equity in the denominator. So between ROA and ROE, which one is a better measure for shareholders? Well, the answer is going to be ROE. From an equity perspective, ROE is what you really care about. And we're going to show that and we're going to show how that's related to ROA in the next segment here. So return on equity really has three parts to it. First, you have the net income margin. Second, you have asset turnover. And third, you have the equity multiplier. Let's talk about each of these in turn. We've talked about profit margin. How much profit do you make for a given dollar level of sales? Asset turnover is a little bit different. That's more like volume. For a given level of, of assets, how much sales can you generate? Now, if we combine those two measures, we get return on assets because the sales cancel out. The third component is what makes ROE different from ROA, and that is the equity multiplier. This captures the effects of leverage. Even though we don't have liabilities anywhere in the formula, they're implicitly there. So using DuPont analysis, we can analyze why a company is more profitable than another company. We can see whether it's from higher profit margins, greater sales volume, meaning asset turnover, or if one company simply has higher leverage. So for example, looking at Verizon and AT&T, you can clearly see that Verizon is a much more profitable company. The source of that profitability is laid out clearly here in this DuPont analysis. Verizon has more than twice as high of a net income margin, and they have slightly higher asset turnover. Finally, you can see their equity multiplier is a little bit more than 50% higher than that of AT&T. So they are more highly leveraged. Now you're not going to see big striking differences here because these two companies are pretty similar. Let's look at a company that's not similar at all, Kroger. Kroger is a grocery store chain. They have about the same ROE as Verizon, but you can see the source of it is very different. Kroger's net income margin is, of course, very low. Grocery stores, 2%. But their asset turnover is incredible. And finally, they have a high equity multiplier. So DuPont analysis is a great tool to use to analyze companies. Now, of the three components of ROE, is there one that is best? Well, not really. You like to see companies with high net income margin to show that they have pricing power. But it's also nice to see high asset turnover. That shows greater efficiency, right? For a given level of assets, if I can generate more sales than my competitors, that's efficient. I would say the least desirable source of profitability is the third component, the equity multiplier. 
So for the same level of return on equity, the company with the lower equity multiplier is a better deal because it's going to be less risky. And it has more room to improve its ROE in future years if it decides to take on more debt. Well, that's all I have for this video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. It helps me a lot. Thanks for watching.